Our travels have taken us all across Texas, from Orange to El Paso, from Central Time into Mountain. But until today, we never knew the Lone Star State spanned a third time zone. You'll find it in the countryside halfway between Laredo and San Antonio, where a small troop of people live on monkey time. The days start off pretty early in the morning. You know, we're on monkey time, uh, not human time, and so everybody's here at seven o'clock in the morning. Monkeys don't stop needing, needing assistance just because it's five o'clock. Monkeys never punch out, they never stop needing food, they don't know what a holiday is. Every morning starts the same way at Born Free USA Primate Sanctuary. Staff shuffle about sorting medicine and preparing to deliver snacks for the animals under their care. Uh, for section one and two, uh, we adjusted the amount of chow slightly. And after manager Dale Ruberry's team meeting, the day turns to monkey business as usual. All right, all good? Yep. All right, thanks guys. All right, so we're gonna be putting out some of this monkey chow for them. Uh -huh. Just spread it out so that the low-ranking guys can get some and the high-ranking guys can get some and there's not too much fighting. Dale and her co-workers deliver fruit, nuts, fresh water, and medicine across 186 acres of Texas landscape. Just grab a couple of bananas, a couple of bunches. And after years of experience, they can spot each monkey from a mile away. Um, we don't want to hand it to them, but yeah, you can give one to Jiro, Bradley here. You start seeing them um, just as you see people. I mean, I know some of these guys, they can be walking away 100 yards away, and I know just by the, the shape of their butt, These are our last pieces of melon for the day, so uh, we're done. Well, for now, and then we do it all again tomorrow. About 600 primates live at Born Free, from macaques to baboons to vervets. The largest and oldest group at the sanctuary are the Japanese snow monkeys. <laughs> yes, you heard right, snow monkeys who had become a nuisance in their home country, they were saved from extermination by a Texas rancher back in the 70s. And now Sanctuary Director Tim Ajax watches over their descendants today. They adapted, I take it. Absolutely, they, they did in a, in a relatively short period of time too. They learned to eat different types of plant material here as they experimented. Uh, they learned how to find shade. They developed separate words from their Japanese counterparts, including calls for rattlesnakes and bobcats. And uh, prickly pear cactus. And prickly pear cactus. <laughs> uh, so yeah, they, they integrated themselves into the local landscape very quickly. What do you do with them? Well, and that's a great question. We, we actually get asked that question quite a bit. Well, what do you do with them? And the quick answer is nothing. We're here to provide them a permanent home. Uh, they had no place to go. The rest of the animals here come from research labs or the exotic pet trade. Some live in large natural spaces with lots of their kind. Others have psychological issues that require them to have a private enclosure. But every one has a name, a personality, and a story. Buddy came in at about eight months. Elvis came in at about six months. He was distraught, would scream and bark at the slightest sound. In this enclosure, we have two uh, male rhesus macaques, Chongo, who was an ex-pet, and Professor, who was recently retired from a laboratory facility. This is Darwin, he was an ex-pet. Last time we weighed him, he was 124 pounds, so we put him on a diet. Um, and he carries this red egg around him wherever he goes. So that's his egg? That's his egg, and, and away he goes. So he's had enough of us for today. day. 
this is actually what we do when we're at our best is provide them as much of a natural environment as possible and allow them to live their lives unexploited. On a day-to-day -day basis, we're not here to interact with them, to make them our friends, our buddies, to, to be pets for us or anything like that. We're, we're here for them. So our mission here is to provide the best quality of life we absolutely can for these primates who are in captivity through no fault of their own. For monkeys that have been raised in captivity that can't be released to the wild, this is just about as close to the wild as we can get for them. There is a common theme at Born Free, an unpleasant truth hiding around every turn. Story after story fits into the exact same summary. Each animal wound up here because it was threatened or harmed in some way by a single sweeping species. For some reason, we feel the need to put them in cages, make them pets, and make them perform for us. Um, I, I think that that doesn't say very kind things about us. It gives us a sense, of, in my opinion, an improper sense that we can do whatever we want with, with any other living thing. Um, and I find that very troubling. My daddy believed that you could judge a man's character by how he treats those weaker than himself. The folks at Born Free have aced that test. Their refuge, nestled in the South Texas brush, gives back what was taken away from innocent, remarkable creatures. And they hope that by repaying this debt to Mother Nature, humankind will start living up to its name. We have a great care staff here, and while we all enjoy doing what we do, we wouldn't mind being put out of business. We wouldn't mind saying, you know what, there's no longer a need to have a sanctuary. They're so like us. I mean, you, you feel connected to them in some way. Little mannerisms they do, the interactions between them, their socialization is just, it's so similar to, to humans. It's, it's hard not to feel that connection. Thank you.